guys, so today I'm going to be talking to you guys about something that is very personal to me and something that's very hard for me to talk about. I just figured I would just do this now. There's no better time. I don't want to like prep for this. I'm not going to make my bed, clean up my room. It's a little bit messy, but we're just going to get into the video. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys about my eating disorder how I developed an eating disorder, and ultimately how I came out the other side, which I can't even believe that I'm saying that right now because I was at a point where I believed that I would never, ever come out of it. I read books and I read things that said, you're going to have this for the rest of your life, and this is just something that you have to deal with from it on a day-to-day -day basis, and you have to take one day at a time. I don't know. I just read books that said, you're always going to have this. It's not, it, this is a part of you. And I'm just going to be really honest. I refused to believe that I was going to have binge eating disorder for the rest of my life. I wanted to beat the odds and say that I came out on the other side because I want to help people. I want to help girls. I want to help guys. I want to help whoever has this. If I find a way out permanently, I'm going to share it. I know that some people are going to disagree. I know that some people are going to say, that's not what doctors say. That's not what psychologists say. That's not what anybody says. And you know what? It's not what anybody says. What I'm about to tell you, how I defeated my eating disorder, goes against pretty much all odds. I had binge eating disorder, otherwise known as BED, and I developed it um, my, pretty much my freshman year of high school. I am now a senior in high school. And for personal reasons, I am going to change a couple names. Um, obviously not my name. My name is Cambria, if you didn't know that already. Um, but I'm not trying to rat anybody out. I'm not trying. This isn't a video that's like blaming people. If you have an eating disorder right now and you're pointing the blame on somebody, you're saying that, you know, they did this to me, I would have never had this eating disorder if that person would have never come into my life. I, I struggled with that too. I very much did and I, I wanted to point the blame. Honestly, for me, I can't say for you, but for me, I don't want to point the blame on people. Ultimately, I brought on my eating disorder. Nobody, nobody forced me to have an eating disorder. Nobody caused me and made me have my eating disorder. Forgiveness, for me, if you're blaming someone, forgiveness is really not about forgiving the other person. I really believe that it's just giving grace to those people that hurt you. It sets yourself free and it, it doesn't allow you to be in bondage to that person anymore and be angry. The anger that's binding you together, it allows that to just break off and it allows you to move on and move forward and that is what forgiveness did for me. To give you a quick little background, I moved uh, away from Huntington Beach, Southern California um, back in 2009 and I started my eighth my eighth grade year up here. Most of eighth grade year, I didn't really have any friends. And you know, I was honestly, I was just like praying for a friend. I really wanted somebody that I could hang out with. And I didn't really get that person until ninth grade. So my freshman year, I made a friend and her name was Jenny, or her name is Jenny. <laughs> She's still alive. But, um, and Jenny was a great friend to me. She was beautiful. Basically what happened in ninth grade, um, like the middle of ninth grade, she lost a lot of weight. And um, you know, she was at a perfectly healthy weight to begin with and she lost a lot of weight. And that was the first time that I kind of thought to myself like, hey, I might be a little bit overweight. Just to clear things up, I was a very, very naturally slender person my whole life. I played soccer. I was a very active child. In ninth grade, I was healthy. I did not need to lose any weight at all. And I just, was, I started comparing myself to my friend Jenny and I just thought, you know, I, I'm so much heavier than her. My thighs are so much bigger than her and I need to lose some weight. I just wanted to lose a little bit of weight. I wasn't super serious about it, but I definitely cleaned up my diet. I started packing really healthy lunches and I just started working out a little bit at home. We bought a treadmill and every day I would work out like 30 minutes after school and it wasn't anything like excessive. So the problem was not the healthy eating and not the working out, but it was the fact that I was doing it to lose weight and I wasn't doing it for myself. I thought that other people 
saw me as like the heavier friend and when I was standing next to my friend I was heavier than her. Um, I wouldn't even say heavier. I had more body fat than her. It was good, healthy body fat. You need body fat. You need fat. It was the comparison factor that really made me, that pushed me into overdrive, I guess. Okay, rolling into sophomore year now um, is when things started to get a little bit more extreme. All throughout that time, as she got thinner, I just felt like I was getting bigger and I felt like I was gaining more weight when in reality I wasn't gaining any weight. I was just comparing myself to her. That's when kind of more extreme things uh, began. Started to restrict myself, restrict my diet. No cookies, no cake, no dessert, nothing ever. I was very, very restrictive and very exclusive to what I ate. I basically deprived my body of nutrients and once your body is deprived of nutrients, your body is going to scream at you like, hey, I need food. That's when it all began. I remember the first night that I binged. I clearly remember it. In fact, I was on a Skype call with one of my good friends. I ate an enormous amount of food in a very small amount of time and I remember just feeling this overwhelming urge to eat lots and lots and lots of food and whatever I wanted. I ate ice cream, I ate cookies, I ate, I ate everything. I ate healthy fats, I ate pistachios, I ate just everything. I ate fruit. Everything that my body was crying out for, not that my body was crying out for like ice cream and all this stuff, but the sugars, the carbs, the protein, everything. My body was deprived of nutrients, so it just wanted to eat everything, and I had deprived myself so long saying, no, you can't eat this, no, you can't eat that. I remember my first binge, and that's when it really all began. And I didn't understand, I didn't know that I had an eating disorder, I didn't know what binging was. I had no idea. I just thought, you know, I have this weird problem. I just remember that night after the Skype call was over, I started crying and I didn't understand why I ate all that food. And, and first of all, it made me upset because I was so restrictive. I was like, I can't believe I just ate all that food. I'm gonna gain so much weight, blah, blah, blah. I cried and cried and cried and I was so incredibly stuffed. I didn't understand why I had such a strong urge to eat all of that food. It almost was like something was controlling me in my mind. Like I couldn't stop eating the food. I couldn't stop the fact that I wanted the food so much. I literally felt like I had to eat the food or I don't know, I was just gonna go literally mentally insane. I continued the cycle of binge and then purge essentially. Um, when I say purge, I don't mean like um, a bulimic would. I wasn't bulimic, so I didn't purge necessarily. I never threw up any of my food and I never went to the gym for like hours and hours and hours and tried to like purge it out by exercising. But I did continue the restrictive habits of food. So then junior year came and I decided to do homeschooling and so basically I no longer was friends with my friend Jenny. I just felt like I was trapped. It started basically like freshman year, the restrictive eating and the binging began my sophomore year and it did not end until um, this past January, December. This is what worked for me. And honestly, I can't tell you to walk in my footsteps exactly because guess what? Your feet are shaped differently. You're gonna have a different walk, a different journey, a different way to get out of it. But I'm gonna share with you how I got out of it and I hope that you can glean from it what you can. I've been like binge free essentially for a uh, half a year now and some people are gonna say, you know, who are you to come on here and say, you know, you've, you've only stopped binging for a half a year. Well, I used to binge every single night. I was always binging, I was always eating, I was always stuffed and full and I just, I couldn't get out of the cycle. I didn't want to wait any longer because I know that there are some of you out there that are struggling with binge eating and six months to binge eaters is a crazy amount of time to not have an urge to binge and I can really confidently say that I will not binge again. I will not restrict myself again. Once I figured out that I had binge eating disorder, once I read a ton of books, talked to my doctor, my thoughts were if I just eat a healthy diet, if I stop restricting myself, I'll stop binging and that's a pretty logical thing and I actually think that that's the thing that people, um, is like the, that's like the biggest part of binge eating in my opinion when you're trying to get out of it is like you think that, okay, I'm going to stop restricting myself, I'm going to stop doing that and I'm just going to eat healthy and work out and just, you know, live a normal healthy lifestyle. That's where, that's where it becomes an issue with trying to get out of binge eating. 
It's a habit. It's a habit that has formed into your brain and your primal instincts were like, hey, binge, eat, binge, binge, and you, you kept binging and you binged and you binged and you binged because your body is literally screaming out, you need food, you need nutrients, and so you binge so that you can fulfill that need, and if you try and resist the binge, which I think we've all been there, you know, you think, okay, you don't want to binge because, you know, you're, you're just going to regret it later, you know, you're going to gain weight, you're going to have to work out. There's no, there's no rationalizing with like your primal brain. You can't talk yourself or your primal brain out of it because that's just what your primal brain is made to do. For example, go ahead and cross your arms right now. Okay, so that was instinctal. I'm not trying, is that even a word, instinctal? I don't know. You don't have to think about it at all. It just comes naturally. Now go ahead and try and cross your arms the other way. You kind of have to think about it a little bit more. It's easier to just cross your arms. Okay, wait a second. It's the same, it's kind of the same thing. Primal brain just goes, binge, I need food, I need nutrients. Boom, it's just an automatic response. So when you try to rationalize with it, there's no rationalization. There's no, I'm just gonna eat a healthy diet and I'm just gonna go back to normal and not binge anymore. What happens is you binge and you binge and you binge and you binge and what happens when you do something over and over and over again? It becomes a habit. They say that it's, it's this, this deeper meaning, it's emotional eating, it's, it's something that's so much bigger than, you know, just binging. I don't think there's any such thing as emotional binging. Now there definitely is emotional eating, and I want you to understand the difference between the two because I know that there are people that are going to say, you know, I emotional eat, you know, when I'm sad I eat a candy bar. This isn't, that's not the same thing. Binge eating is a natural response that your body gives off when you deprive yourself of vital nutrients. It's not anything deeper than that. It's not some, you know, emotional, spiritual reason. It is purely a reaction and then it becomes a habit. So that's all that it is. It's a reaction and it's a habit and there's nothing deeper. Psychologists or whoever that you go talk to about binge eating when they say, oh, you know, how was your childhood or blah, blah, blah. Like they ask you all the qu these questions. It ties in with a deeper meaning. And then you start to go, okay, why did I binge today? Why did I eat this? And it just becomes this all consuming thing. I'm sitting here today telling you that I went to seek professional help. I tried to get a counselor, it kind of got messed up. I did read tons and tons of books that professionals have wrote on this kind of stuff. And I did go to binge eating um, like recovery groups or like the 12 step program. I tried those. I was trying to take what the professionals and the medical doctors and the psychologists on all this stuff and the eating disorder professionals, I was seeking their help and it wasn't helping me at all. I couldn't, I couldn't break my binge eating with the advice that they were giving me. If you have gotten out of binge eating by listening to a counselor or a medical professional or doctor, that that is so good. Like whatever gets you out is amazing. But it didn't work for me and that's why I'm sharing what worked for me because nothing else worked except for this. The problem for me when I was seeking help is that everyone was telling me and everyone was saying it's an emotional reason, you know, why do you binge eat? What do you feel when you're binge eating? What do you, what causes you? What, what are some of the triggers? You know, stay away from your triggers. I think that is just like the most unhelpful thing for me ever because everything seemed to be a trigger. You know, going to a birthday party, going to Thanksgiving, going to whatever, um, where there was food involved. Everything seemed to be a trigger and then I was just isolating myself from everything and I was like, okay, I can't go there, I can't do this, I can't eat this because that's a trigger. Not going to different events and functions wasn't going to fix my problem. You know, staying away from my triggers was not going to fix the main issue, which was just the fact that it was just a habit, it was an instinct, and I just needed to simply break the habit. When you're constantly thinking about you know, okay, what are my triggers and what do I have to stay away from? That's when binge eating becomes your whole world because you're, you're constantly thinking, okay, why did I binge eat? What's the reasoning? What's the emotional reason behind that? The professionals make you analyze every single thing that you do and they, they draw it in. They draw every single thing, every part of your past. Okay, well, I didn't have the best childhood and I had really mean friends in high school and yes, that probably was the thing that 
pushed you into the restrictiveness and that caused you to have low self-esteem and low self-image and yes that probably is what caused it but that's not what causes your urges to binge we're simply talking about that overwhelming feeling that just it's like a wave that crashes over you. That feeling doesn't come from your dad saying that you're overweight or your friend saying that you need to lose weight. The simple urge to binge is caused from your primal brain and then it becomes a habit over time after you doing it. So I discovered this book called Brain Over Binge. It's written by Katherine Hansen and she says she was a bulimic. I was never bulimic but I did have binge eating disorder and this this covers bulimia and binge eating and the title of it is Brain Over Binge and why I was bulimic, why conventional therapy didn't work, which conventional therapy basically is why the people, why the therapists, why the doctors, why all of that didn't work for her. She taught me how to stop binge eating and I this was a godsend you guys. She talks about the mainstream media and what doctors and professionals say about bulimia and binge eating. She says the mainstream view of bulimia holds that it is a disease that manifests as a means of coping with deep underlying emotional problems, which is exactly what I was talking about. I actually read a review online for this book that this lady was like 80 or 90 years old and she literally was binging and purging like her whole life and this was the only book that helped her and she no longer binges and purges and it was because of this book and I, if that doesn't speak for itself, if that isn't profound enough for some of you, then I don't really know what is because this lady was binging and purging her whole entire life and she went and sought medical help and went to professionals and doctors and everything like that and nothing worked for her and then she came across this book and did the simple thing that Catherine talks about and she is now set free from binge eating. So um, I'm gonna show you guys what helped me the most from her book um, and this is the page 133 um, binge purge cycle. So the first thing is, is food restriction. This is how it begins, if you will. So I, and I want you to understand the difference between I and it. So I is you yourself, your rational brain, and it is your primal instinct brain, your animal brain, the brain that says binge, binge, binge. Okay, so that's the difference between I and it. I is rational, it is not rational. Okay, so food restriction. I made a choice to restrict food. Now this in itself right here is what I believe is the emotional part of all of this. Because of your eating disorder tendencies is because of emotional reasons. You don't feel good enough, you don't feel thin enough, your friends, your family, whatever. So you made a choice to restrict food because you felt bad about yourself. You felt like you needed to be thinner. So now your survival instincts kick in. So this is where it, your irrational brain, the brain that's trying to love and protect you, sends out, I need to, you need to binge, you need food, you need nutrients. Now we go to the binge part of this. So binge, I gave into its demands. So you yourself, your rational brain, could not fight with your irrational brain that's sending out these urges to binge. Now we're moving from the binge to the purge part of it. So this is where it gets a little bit different for people that are bulimic. The purge part of this is where I, so your rational you, you yourself, you attempt to get back control, to get back in control of your eating and your lifestyle by purging. All of this is literally coming from the Brain Over Binge book and I do not take credit for that cycle, for making that cycle at all, it is not mine. Katherine uh, Hansen made that cycle. Good job, Katherine, I love you and I am so thankful that you wrote this book. This is one of my favorite parts of it in the prevention or relapsing is prevention. And I quote from page 275, she says, I often think of things that may have kept me from developing bulimia in the first place and there is only one thing that would have prevented it avoidance of dieting. So the binging ultimately came from my diet, from dieting. So when I was doing my diet drinks, when I was restricting what I was eating, when I was on a diet and I was trying to lose weight, that's when my binging began and my survival instincts kicked in. So if you never diet in the first place, you're not going to binge. So that is like so profound to me because I was thinking, okay, you know, it's an emotional reason. That's what 
that's what the therapists and that's what the doctors are saying, that's what I'm reading, not in this book, but in other books that I read, and, and that's why, and it's just an emotional thing, but it's actually just because I simply chose to diet and restrict, and yes, the dieting and the restriction may have occurred from emotional reasons, but the overall binge cycle is not because of emotional reasoning, okay? I hope that that makes sense. Right now I'm going to go over um, how I literally began my process of stopping binge eating. Okay, have a list ready. Like, go to your list and, you know, go go for a, a walk or a jog or go exercise. I think that's silly. That never worked for me. I tried doing all that. I tried writing in my journal and writing out all of my feelings. And the problem with that is that it's not stemming from emotional. So you can't just go write in your journal and write out all of your feelings and then have your urge to binge stop. What happens when you ignore something? the feeling just becomes stronger. For example, you go into a room and you tell a toddler not to touch that toy, what are they gonna do? They're just gonna go right over to the toy and they're gonna touch it and they're gonna play with it. It's the same thing with binge eating. If you tell your brain, okay, um, we're just gonna go write in a journal or we're just gonna go for a jog or we're just gonna take a nice bubble bath, what are you gonna be thinking about the whole time? Binge eating, you're gonna be thinking about, okay, I can't binge, I'm taking my bubble bath, I'm writing in my journal. Essentially, you're just making the problem worse for yourself. So don't try and fight it. Don't try and distract yourself. This is what you do. This is what I did. I had an urge to binge. I didn't turn on the TV. I didn't try and distract myself. I sat there and I thought, I let the thoughts come. I let the whole binge. You want to eat. You know you're going to eat anyway. You know you're going to do it anyway. So why wait? Just do it now. You know you want to eat the food. I let the thoughts come. I didn't resist them. I didn't argue against them. I knew that it was just a simple survival instinct that my brain was sending off. And I knew that if I were to just listen to my brain, but not act on the binge. Just let the waves crash over you. Just let the whole binge eat. And you're going to let those thoughts come and you're not going to argue and you're not going to distract. You're going to just sit there and you're going to let your survival instincts do their job and you're not going to try and tell your survival instincts, hey, don't do your job because they're just going to keep doing their job anyway. You don't have to analyze it all. You don't have to connect it back to what what was my childhood or that's the beautiful part of all of this is that you don't have to do anything except sit there and let your survival instincts do their job and I sat on my couch and I let the thoughts roll and I didn't argue or distract myself and it lasted about an hour I sat on my couch for an hour maybe like a crazy person or whatever and every single time that I had an urge to binge that is all that I did. So before traditional therapy teaches you to do the, all of these things to distract yourself. So essentially before you are basically fighting the waves. So here is you and you are, you know, trying to swim your way through these waves and, um, you know, you either take a nice long boat ride and you try and distract yourself. You know, if you just take your boat out to sea, you're still in the sea and you're still in the urges to binge. I hope that makes sense. My theory idea and the brain over binge theory idea. Here you are now just sitting on the sand on your little towel. You're 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 removing yourself. Sorry, I keep saying you're you're I'm just trying to think. You're removing yourself um, and detaching yourself emotionally from those urges to binge. Once you do that, once you take yourself out of those waves and once you sit on the shore enough and you sit on your towel enough and you let those urges come, but you don't act on them, literally you are weakening the neurological connection that your brain has to the habit and you are literally like breaking down the urge you're every time you sit back and you allow it to come and you just don't binge you are taking that part of your brain and you're neurologically like breaking that habit down and you're stripping it down until it's no longer a habit and you no longer have those urges to binge. And it's okay if you watch this video or read this book or you know do whatever and you, you mess up because I mess up. I cried. I bawled. I had urges to binge for about a month, three to four weeks. And I, I think the reason is, is because it's a habit and it takes about three weeks to break a habit or form a habit. All right, now I'm gonna talk about why I believe that I will not binge anymore. And again, it's because A, I'm not gonna be dieting anymore. And B, 
I've made videos on this. You have to learn to love who you are. You were made and created in the image of God, and He created and designed you and sculpted you into a beautiful, unique human being. And you have worth and you have value, and no matter if you feel pretty or beautiful or it doesn't matter how you look, you are beautiful because you were created and you were made that way. It doesn't matter how you feel because you can feel like ugly and just worthless and terrible and that's how I felt. I felt like so bad. I gained 20 pounds from my binge eating disorder. I still have those 20 pounds on me and again as I said I was naturally pretty thin or slender or whatever, um, but I did gain weight. I understand that this video is not going to be for everyone, but this is the only thing that has helped me, and the two things that have helped me was to A, to understand your worth. That's the number one thing, is that you are loved no matter if you are a size 100 or a size double zero. Your worth isn't in your weight. The scale cannot measure how much you are loved. Jesus died for you at 100 pounds and at 200 pounds. I know that there is some people that are going to come on here and comment and say, you know, um, who are you to be posting this? You're not a doctor, blah, 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 blah. And I know that I am going to get people that disagree with me, but you know what? There's going to be some people that are going to listen to this video and that they're going to take something from it and it, it's going to be a beautiful thing and it's going to help you maybe and that's why I'm doing this. Brain over binge, I really suggest that if you have bulimia, if you have even anorexia, if you have an eating disorder or you have eating disorder tendencies to buy this book and if you don't have money to buy this book, if you want to enter for the chance to win this book, I'm going to be giving away a couple books um, of Brain Over Binge to you and to enter this I want you to share this video. I want you to share it um, on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, here on YouTube. If it was me and I was lost and feeling hopeless, if I, if you were to show me Cambria this video a year ago and I were to stumble across this video and watch it, I know that it would have helped me and that would have saved me a lot of heartache and a lot of pain. Right now I'm going to read to you one of the journal entries that I wrote. This was actually just this past May, May 29th. I said, um, Dear God, I feel nothing. My pain is so deep I can't describe it. It's the kind of pain you feel in the throbbing of your head and the hollowness of your heart. My soul is dry. I feel such emotional pain the side effects are physical. I didn't know what it felt like to truly and completely hate someone until tonight. I am hopeless. I am done. No motivational quote can bring me back to life. I've broken myself, I disgust myself, I am repulsive. I am so fat and ugly. I'm over dramatic, but I am real. I am very real and very sad and very wrong. I will not always 100% love myself. I won't always feel great about myself and this just goes to show you that you know, I did, I did feel horrible my, about myself and I still do have really difficult struggles and difficult days that I go through and you know, that journal entry at the end when I said, and I'm very wrong, I was writing all those things, I was writing down my feelings and my emotions and you know, that before last year maybe I would have felt that way and then I would have, you know, started on a diet and felt like, okay, I'm so fat or overweight or whatever and, and I'm just going to go on a diet and restrict myself and then the binging would have began. And I wrote that last month and I haven't binged in half a year and I'm not going to go back into dieting. I still do feel things like this and at the very end I said I'm very wrong because I know that even though I'm feeling all of that, even though I feel disgusting and repulsive and fat and broken and alone and horrible. I know that even though I'm feeling that way, that is not who I am. I hope that this video can help you. I hope that you took one thing from this video and even if you don't have an eating disorder, I hope that this video can, I don't know, relate to you. I don't know. Just remember that no matter how you feel, your worth isn't in your weight, and you are worth more than the number on the scale.